I'd like to just offer a warm welcome to everyone to this brand new school year. It's terrific to see everybody back here right where you belong. Those lyrics from the rock band Chicago really describe how all of us adults here at PBS feel about you, our students. We really missed you during the summer because you're the inspiration. Everywhere I go, all summer long, you were always on my mind, in my heart, in my soul. You're the inspiration. I'm serious. I mean that all summer long. You were always on my mind, always in my heart, and always in my soul. I think your teachers have been waiting to see you and very excited to see you too, especially since they didn't know some of you. In fact, when PBS teachers talk about you, when I talk to teachers about their students, their faces light up. They love talking about their students, and I think that you're the light of their life. I see their excitement as they teach you, as they watch you learn, challenging you to grow as learners, helping you deepen your understanding of math or reading or writing, building up your emotional intelligence, guiding you as you dive into that science experiment, an art project, a new musical piece, a new Spanish text, a physically difficult exercise, or even a new book that Ms. Noth demands that you read. So, have any of you ever heard Coach Drake saying hello to you at carpool in the morning? He is so excited that I can hear him from my office every single morning. Here's the deal, folks. You are the inspiration to Coach Drake. It's true. Is that true, Coach Drake? OK. That was a very meager response. However, I just want you to know, you students are the inspiration to everyone at PBS, all of your PBS teachers. You are the inspiration to us. You're the inspiration to your parents. You're the light of our lives. I think PBS teachers were singing that Chicago rock song all summer. You're the inspiration everywhere I go. You're always on my mind, in my heart, in my soul. You're the inspiration. Whenever your parents talk about you, so let's talk about your parents for a moment, I see their faces light up too. You're their inspiration. You're the light of your parents' lives, the twinkle in their eye. I see your parents get excited when they watch you learn, when they see you grow as learners, when they actually think that you're growing up too fast. My sister has twin children, Leah and Nathan. They finished high school three months ago. My sister is a proud parent, I'm a proud uncle, and my parents are really proud grandparents. Leah and Nathan are an inspiration. So in the newspaper article celebrating their graduation, the journalist asked them this question. What is your most memorable moment from school? The thing that you remember the most from school. This is what Leah said. Getting to go to school every day with my twin brother, Nathan. Now, isn't that heartwarming? Nathan is Leah's inspiration. How about my nephew, Nathan? How did he respond to the question about his most memorable moment in school? This is what he said, locking a teacher in her own classroom. <laughs> so, as you see, as is clear, you can be an inspiration in a variety of ways. There's a big range for being an inspiration. You can light up someone's life in a variety of ways, whether you're doing it like Leah or doing it like Nathan. In fact, so let's come back to the front. Don't anybody lock your teacher in their classroom today. Do that on Monday, all right? <laughs> so let's come back to the front. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my own summer and some of my former students. Because I've told you that your teachers' faces light up when they talk about you. I've shared with you that your parents' faces light up when they talk about you. Well, this summer, my face lit up a lot. 
because several former students crept back into my life, sort of as a surprise. Patrick and Spencer saw online that I had finished my eighth year at PBS. So they sent me a congratulations online, and Spencer texted me a very nice text. Three weeks ago, Henry's dad, Ed, sent me a photo of my former student, Henry, and me on graduation day at St. Paul School many, many years ago. And then I was in my favorite bookstore in Washington, DC, my favorite bookstore in our nation's capital. I was asking the bookstore staff for a reading suggestion. I was focused on a very specific event about Russia. And then I heard my former student, John, call out my name out of the blue. It just so happens that he works at that bookstore at that time, and he is a Russia expert in graduate school. So John could tell me which book to read, just like Ms. Noth. My student became my teacher. You students, you really are the inspiration. But here's something even better, and I really need you to hear this. You students are the soul of PBS. You are the soul of PBS. That's a really tough thing to understand. Because when Chicago actually sings, you're on my mind and in my heart and in my soul, we know where the mind is. We know where the heart is. But it's really tricky to figure out where that soul is. Where is it? What is it? Many traditions, religious and otherwise, have talked about the soul. They talk about the soul as the energy, the spirit, the driving force, the vitality. They talk about the soul as the reason for being, the very reason that we exist. In Egypt, many, many years ago, there are creation stories that talk about the soul as the eternal force. It's like a force. In Hinduism, it's called the Atman. In Judaism, it's called Nishama. In Islam, Gru. In Christianity, Christians talk about the soul as the core, the essential core deep down that drives you to God. I read an article in the Harvard Business Review this summer. It's called The Soul of a Startup. So this view of soul, this research on soul, makes a few things clear. The soul is everywhere. It is not confined to one place like the mind and the heart. The soul is vital. It's the energy. It's the force. It's the spirit. It's the very reason for being. My friends, at PBS, I want you to know that you are the reason that we're here. There is no other reason for your teachers, parents, or me to be here other than you. You students are this school's vital life force. You're the soul. You're the inspiration. You're the spirit. You're the energy. You're the very breath and reason for our being. You're the reason the teachers came here to teach, and you're the reason the parents drop you off here every single morning. And you are my inspiration, and you light up my face. I'm here to tell you today, students, that you are the soul of PBS, the driving force, the reason for being. And so I have three things that I need you to do this year so that you can be the soul of PBS. Three things that I expect from you this year. The first is, I want you to unleash your energy and passion in all of your classes. Put all of your energy and passion into your classes. Secondly, I want you to fire up your fellow students. Get your fellow students excited about what you're learning. And then thirdly, I want you to energize your teachers, and I want you to impress them with your learning. You are the soul, you're the life force, and we're all expecting great things from you. So three things that I want you to think about when you leave today, unleash your energy in every class, fire up your fellow students, and then energize your teachers with your learning. Welcome back, and thank you.